So here you can see I've completed all the work I need to do with the latex um, around the mouth here and on the cheek and uh, this prosthetic appliance here, which uh, for today I just I glued down with more latex, um, which you know does work. Uh, latex or spirit gum or you know the crazy medical adhesive is fine. Um, but you know again I'm, I'm not going to be in, in this all day, so I'm not terribly concerned with longevity. So, um, and now that this is all dry, if you were using cream makeup, this is where you uh, put the caster sealer on and let it sit for 10 minutes and wipe it off. Um, but since I don't have to do that because I have grease paint, I'm just going to uh, get started. And, um, you know, when you use grease paint, what you want to do is keep some alcohol handy. Um, to help thin it because it's, uh, it's it's very opaque right out of the tin. And if you want to thin it all to uh, dilute some of the color, then just uh, dip your sponge in alcohol. And, uh, you know, the more alcohol you use, the thinner the color will be. Um, it helps uh, keep things a little bit more realistic looking, I guess. So, um, I'll, I'll spare you those details, but what I'm going to do is uh, color all the latex prosthetic here with the grease paint and then uh, also do the same on the left side of my face here with the uh, the cream stick and I'll come back after it's all powdered and whatnot and uh, talk more about adding dimension to the deformity using uh, shadows and highlights and color and all that wonderful crap that we love um, and also what to do with the good half of the face too. So I, uh, I'll spare you the uh, endless grease painting and I'll uh, catch you in a minute. I just did this whole spiel and I forgot a lot of information so I have to reshoot it. So here I am uh, redoing it, screwing things up like I told you I would. And uh, here we go again. <laughs> um, so after the foundation is is applied and set with powder if necessary. Uh, it's, now it's time to start ad adding uh, highlights and shadows to create uh, depth and whatnot to make it more realistic. Because right now I have my cream foundation on this side all set, uh, grease paint over here. It's all all set ready to go, but it's very two-dimensional. Um, there's really no depth here. You can't really see my features because there's no no contrast. And on stage, it's a problem because stage lights wash things out. So you see um, stage performers, you know, paying a, a, a lot of attention to uh, defining their features and whatnot, just to look natural on stage. Um, so what I'm going to do, eventually, I'm not going to really make you watch it because it's going to take too long. But I have uh, more grease paint here to add shadows into the deeper areas and highlights of lighter colors when they go on the top. Um, and I have uh, highlight and shadow wheels here to do that with. Um, but you can, you know, if you're you're on a tight budget, you know, eyeshadow palettes work great. Um, apply them with a brush, apply them with a finger, whatever. Uh, you use those for years, and they're almost they're almost easier to use than the uh, the highlight and shadow wheels. So um, great option. And again, you know, keep them. Keeping things on a budget, this is the way to go. Um, and just me, you know, personally, I like the uh, original London disfigurement design, and that's a you know congenital birth defect, really. So it's not it's not bloody, it's not terribly red or anything. It's more uh, brown, shades of brown. Um, and some people prefer a more a bloodier Eric, and that's fine. Um, I've seen I've seen a few designs, but Eric looks like he got attacked by a lawnmower. And if that's your style, go for it. Um, not mine personally, but if that was the case, if you're going for a uh, a fresher kind of wound, um, you want to focus on using some uh, reds and purples, um, rose wheel colors. Uh, maybe black if it's really, really deep. Um, and maybe invest in some stage blood or blood gel, or you can, you know, make your own blood 
with uh, various recipes on the internet. Look it up. Um, that's not on the website, so sorry. You're going to have to make your own blood. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. But just, this is what I was talking about on, online, on the website, where I said to, uh, to have a good idea of, of what you want to do beforehand so you don't get halfway through and, you know, you decide you want to go for, like, a deep, a gashy, bloody face when all you have is eyeshadow. So, uh, prepare. Think about it ahead of time. Um, because, you know, different schemes are going to need different sets of supplies. So, plan accordingly. Um, but what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, do the grease paint, shadows and highlights on the side, set it with powder, get all that done, and then on the left side, the normal side of the face, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, basic stage makeup technique um, of, of contouring, highlight and shadowing in defining my uh, my bone structure because you know be <laughs> being a female um, I'm not terribly convincing as an older um, disfigured dude so uh, because of that what I have to do is is really just use different techniques to uh, to change the shape of my face so when yeah I'll do that <laughs> while you're while I skip it so you don't have to watch, but I'll, I'll go in and either, you know, if I'm feeling cheap today, I'll, I'll use my eyeshadow here to uh, define certain things. Maybe I'll use my, my fancy stuff. I don't know. Um, but when I come back, I'll show you the results there and uh, tell you a little bit of how that's done. So hopefully I look a little bit different now. Um, I came back and I am uh, completed with coloring, uh, doing all the highlights and shadows on the uh, latex deformity as well as all the contouring on the good half of my face. And like I was saying before, um, you know, being a girl and having to sort of do with like a uh, gender reversal of sorts um, in order to, you know, be the fan for Halloween or whatever, um, I did pay close attention to my bone structure and, and changing that a little bit, uh, making my face look a little bit more gaunt. Uh, defining cheekbones and just the, the facial bone structure uh, to change the shape of my face a little bit to look a little bit more mannish as well as you know aging a face with the crow's feet and the brows and and uh, the nose and whatnot so um, that's basic stage contouring is just paying attention to where the light falls on your face and uh, and how your face looks now, and, and, and paying attention to your bone structure and how that needs to change in order to look more like the character that you're going for. Um, so I actually did this with uh, with my uh, eyeshadow palette because I wasn't the cream makeup and shadow uh, cream, <laughs> cream uh, highlight and shadow wheels are great, um, but I wasn't really digging the uh, the effort behind them today, so I just threw some of the eyeshadow on my face so you can see what kind of result that can give you. And you don't want to go too drastic on the colors and uh, or in general, really. I mean, this is a little bit uh, theatrical um, for just walking around at a party or anything up, up close. And uh, But it looks good from a few feet away, hopefully. And uh, I'm perfectly happy with it. I'm, you know, I'd rather go a little bit more theatrical um, and be a little bit closer to the stage show um, than be too subtle and have it look um, not as believable, even though this is a little bit in your face, highlight, shadow, stage makeup. Uh, that's okay with me, though, so I don't mind. Um, so hopefully I look like a man. Last thing for me to do is, uh, put the wig on and then, uh, you know, go change. So, um, I have a couple more things to do and I will be right back.